So this goes back to our simplifying exponent rules. We are dividing like bases, so what are we going to do with the exponents? Trips. Say it again. We are going to simplify, but by subtracting the exponents. But we're actually going to divide the 12 and 18. So if you were to divide that or reduce it, or this 2 over 3, you would get 2 over 3. Subtract your exponents. Um, so 3 minus 6 and 5 minus 2. We have x to the negative 3 and y to the 3 to the third. Can't have negative exponents. So the y to the third would stay in your numerator. And then x to the third would move down. So 2y to the third all over 3x to the third was your final answer. Yes. Questions on that one? Right. And then number four on the back, this was um, going back to polynomial operations. We are multiplying everything, so whether you are distributing like this, using the box method, either or. That's not, that's not, that's not the wrong one. You're right. Um, what does your number four say? The word problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have that two for ten because it looks like. Oh, it. There we go. It, yeah. I see what it. It points to the back. Okay. So for this word problem, very similar to the word problems from the test that we just took. Um, Buffalo Bill scored twenty-four more than twice the number of points Miami Dolphins scored. Altogether, the team scored sixty-six points. How many points did each team score individually? So you need two variables to find them. Let's call them B and M for number of points Buffalo Bill scored. And number of points my Dolphin scored. That first sentence, yes. Oh, okay, hold on. The first sentence is talking about the Buffalo Bills. So that's going to be B equals. Oh, this, if you were going to say that, you could go ahead. 2M plus 3 and 4 equals 66. Or just 2M plus 3 and 4. 24 plus 2M or 2M plus 24, either or. So that would be your equation for B. Altogether, if I added B and M, I would get 66. So I'm going to take this equation and put it in for B. So 24 plus 2M plus M equals 66. And then solve. So 24 plus 3M equals 66. Get rid of your 24 by subtracting. And then divide. What was that 14? So the Miami Dolphins score, scored 14 points. Then we have to go back and find Buffalo Bills. By putting this number back into this equation. 24 plus 2 times 14. What was that number? 52. When we did the word problems, there was one like this, so I don't know if I changed the numbers at all or if I just copied and pasted. So if you had those notes, you could have went back, bless you, and just saw how we did that before. Questions on that one? Before we start our notes for today, look at your course calendar really fast. Um, important things to notice. You don't have any academy quizzes due today. 
you'll have some due next week and you'll have some due the last week of school. I'll send out a reminder. Make sure you get those done. Um, I probably won't send out progress reports until closer to when we get back. But then also notice, um, last day of school is a flex day. If you're not here that day, um, you'll need to come before or after school when we get back to work on free takes, retake work, finishing tests, anything like that. When we come back, so um, usually we come back like the second, but the second is a day off still. So we come back on a Tuesday, which is why the schedule is pushed. But we are still going to have our quiz and our tests. Um, it'll still be collaborative, the quiz and things like that. Um, there's something else. If you haven't finished the test we just took, starting next week, come see me in the morning, come see me after school, Tuesday through Thursday, come get that done as soon as possible because we won't have time. We may have some time in class where you can do that, but we may not. So if we have time, then yes, you can use that time after you practice a little bit. Um, if we don't have time, you have to come before after. Yeah. No, because I, don't, I haven't graded them all. Right. Any other questions on course calendar, this unit, anything like that? Okay. So this unit is different than last unit because we're not really like solving. We're dealing with a lot of function stuff, and you'll see what that means here in a bit. So everyone should have notes that look like this. This may be familiar to you. It may not be. It, it's okay either way. Let's talk about some vocab first. Okay. This first blank is an ordered pair. Is a set of numbers or coordinates written in the form x, y. A set of ordered pairs is called a relation. So you've seen ordered pairs before. I don't know if you've heard the word relation before. Then we're given this table. Time spent studying for a test versus the score on the test. This is not you guys' test scores, just random data. If I asked you, how would you describe the numbers on the left side? What words come to mind? Notice. Okay. Usually they're specific for a specific set of data. Regina. Okay. Those are both true. Yes. What if I said, what are these called? So be it. Okay. So X values, Y values. What are some other ways to describe x values? Simon? You're thinking domain and range. We'll get to that. So yes, keep that in mind. There are other words, though. Jasmine? Independent, dependent. Your x values are the independent. Where your y values are the dependent, they depend on the x values. Um, there was one more. Um, kind of tying along with independent, dependent, you could also think about if you had these values and an equation. This would be your input. Right. So good words to think about. Anytime you see these words, be thinking X or Y.
Right, so then going back to what Ivan said earlier, the first set of numbers in an ordered pair or all of the x's refers to the domain. That is another way we're going to describe our x values. The second set of numbers in the ordered pairs are all of your y's. And then we are going to use something called a mapping. that illustrates how each element in the domain is paired with an element in the range. So these are four different relations, how we can represent it. One is the table. From this table, we're going to do the rest of these. So we're going to write ordered pairs. Start off with curly brackets because it's going to be the set of all of these. And then write each of your ordered pairs as x, y in parentheses. So 0, 3, 5, 1, 3, negative 6, uh, negative 7, negative 3, and negative 4, 5 end it with curly brackets. So this is the set of all of your ordered pairs. Then when we do our mapping, we list out just the domain and just the range in our curly brackets. Least to greatest. So least to greatest, what would that be? Just x values, right? Just x values. Negative 7, negative 4, 0, 3, 5. Right. And then someone else, least to greatest, tell me what the range values would be. So with our mapping, we kind of do this twice. We list them in the set, the curly brackets, to say this is our set of numbers. But then we also take that same list, least to greatest, and put them in this oval shape. When we list them out here or here, we do not put repeat. So if there were any repeating numbers, we would only list it once. And then list those numbers vertically, least to greatest. The actual mapping part of this is drawing arrows to whatever they were. So you can use the table or your order pairs to do this. 0, 3 was one of them, so you would start at the 0 on your x and map it with the 3 on your y. 5, 1 was one of them. So find the 5 on your x and the 1 on your y and map them together. And then so on and so forth. So 3, negative 6. Negative 7, negative 3. And negative 4, 5. So you actually have to map the numbers to each other. And then the last one we've um, graphed before, not in here, but in previous, you have graphed before, plotted points. So you're going to take either from your mapping, from your table, from your ordered pairs, plot each of those points. If you want to label them, you can. I'm just labeling them so you know which one is which.
finish look back up. So when you're plotting them, always do your X, then your Y. So these are the four different ways you may see a relation when we start to talk about this next piece. You'll, be, you'll need to be able to look at each of these or any of these and be able to tell um, what we're about to talk about. Anyone want to take a guess as to what this work is? Is a relationship between the input and the output? Jim. Function. Right? And remember that these words are interchangeable. The input, the y, the x value, sorry, the domain, the independent variable. That's what I meant to put. Variable, not value, but same difference. And then the output, the range, the y values, the dependent variable. In a function, there is exactly one output for each input. That means our x's cannot have more than one y value. So if we look back at our relations. Each x value has its own y value, and then we just showed that multiple times. If this was like a zero instead, now this same input has two different outputs, and it would no longer be a function. On the next page, we're going to do a couple of these examples together, and then you'll practice one. Off to the side here, draw a table. So we're going to, we have the ordered pairs, we're going to do the graph, we're going to do the mapping, and the table. The order in which you do that does not matter. Right. So graphing 2, 5, go over 2, up 5. I'm going to label them just so you see where they are, you don't need to label them. 3, negative 5, I would go to the right 3, down 5. Four, five, I'd go to the right four and up five. And then five, negative five, go right five and down five. The answer at the bottom, is it a function or not, can be answered at any point in time. You could look at any piece of the relation and see is it a function or not, but we're going to wait to the end. For our domain, we have to list our numbers least to greatest, our x values. What would those be? Keila? Two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, five. If you want to go ahead and put that in your oval, you can do that as well. For our range, what would we put there least to greatest? Regina. Except we would not put the radius because no. we're already saying that negative 5 is a part of the set, so we don't need to put it twice. So you would just say negative 5, 5. We only have two numbers in our y oval instead of four. So when we do our mapping, we have two to five, three to 
3 to negative 5, 4 to 5, and 5 to negative 5. Now, x can only have one y value, but a y value can have multiple x's. So here, we see multiple x's going to the same y value. This is okay, but if we saw multiple arrows at the same x value, that would not be okay. Right? And then our table, our x's have to be least to greatest, our y's just have to match whatever it says. So 2, 3, 4, 5, and then whatever it says. So 5, negative 5, 5, negative 5. Looking at each piece of the relation or any of them, is this a function? Yeah. Each x value has its own y value. None of them repeat. So yes, this is a function. Otis. Wait, what? Because they all use the same one. They each of the x's use different y values. That's okay. If I had two of the same arrows coming to three, that would not be okay. Oh. That's going to be the biggest thing you might mix up here, so try to keep those separate. Okay, any other questions on that one? Let's do another, and then I'll let you practice. Again, somewhere on the side, wherever you have space, make a table. Does not matter your order, but start to do your all of your different relations. Five zero would be on the x axis. Zero five would be on your y axis. Five one would be right above that. And one five would be out. I'm going to do my table before I do my mapping, but the order does not matter. Least to greatest. We have 0, 1, 5, 1. 5, 5, 0. How would we write our domain in curly brackets? Least to greatest. Kila. 0, 1, 5, no repeats. And then our range. 0, 1, 5 again. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. It happens. So we have 0 going to 5, 1 going to 5. 5 going to 0, and 5 going to 1. Is this one a function, Regina? Oh, I have a question. Okay, that's it. So the table on the side, does it get 5, 0, and 5, 1? Does it matter which one it goes to? Um, I would say probably still, like, your Y is doing these greatest, but no, it doesn't really matter. It's not. Someone tell me where you find it's not. I mean, five zero and five one. So whether that's in the order pair, in the table, in the graph, I said that backwards, or in the mapping. Anywhere you see it, you should be able to see that 5 repeats itself and has two different y values. Now, if you had something where it repeated the same y value, or same, yeah, same y value, Um, okay, so if this 
side, five zero, and then five zero again. That would be a function because even though the x is repeated, it repeated to the same y value, so it's not any different. Questions about that one? Some of you may have already started the third, but I want you to try number three. Make sure you have your table off to the side. Do your graph, your table, your mapping, and then figure out is this a function or not. And then when you finish, it will not be okay. um, Remember that your table, the x's need to be least to greatest. And then your y's just need to match them. Um, your points, make sure you're reading if there's negatives or not. So three, negative one, negative two, three, negative one, negative five, and three, two. Make sure you're listing out your domain and range in curly brackets with no repeats. Make sure these are also listed least to greatest. And that you have arrows drawn to each one. And then, was this a function or not? No. Someone tell me why. Because of the threes. The three negative one and the three two. So you either saw it in the mapping that there were two of the same x's with different y values, or in the table, or in the graph, or here in your mapping. Right? Go on to the next page. Anyone know what this is? Yeah. Vertical line test. So this is another way to see is this a function or not, especially on a graph. Um, a graph fails a vertical line test if there's any place where you can draw a vertical line and it passes through more than one point. So, if I were to draw in vertical lines here, do any of these lines touch more than one point? No. No, so that would be a function. If I do the same thing for this next one, Do any of these lines touch more than one point? Yes. Yes. So because they do, that would not be a function. It's as easy as that. For this one, if I drew a vertical line anywhere, would this be a function? No. It's going to touch at more than one place everywhere except right here. This is just one. What about this last one? That is a function. No matter where you draw your line, it looks like it's going to cross more than once, but it doesn't. So that is a function. Do we have any questions on how the vertical line test works? Can you just ask it? Alright. So I want you to try this page. When you finish this page, let me know and I'll check it. And then afterwards, you'll have time to practice your Khan Academy, finish your tests if you need to, work on other stuff. Okay?
Okay. Questions on what we're doing? All right, you guys can work together if you want. All right, I know I checked all of yours, but just so we're all on the same page and it's on the recording on it just in case you go back. I have the answers for these, whether they repeated or not, and why they were or were not functional.